In this workshop update then, we're covering engines in the engine bay, there's a lot going on in there. We're doing a gas conversion, well Steve's really doing sort of an update slash reinstall of a gas conversion on a 110. The engine goes in the Morgan Plus 8 and the Ford Thunderbird is now going back together which you may or may not be able to see through the door there. However, we thought we would just start by showing the difference in the intake manifolds here. So this is a 390 FE intake manifold. Um, workshop staff are complaining. Should have put my phone on silent, huh? Amateur. Hello there. Okay, did it did it all pass okay, yeah? Brilliant. We'll we'll pop down in a couple of minutes to um, pick it up. Cheers mate. Bye. That's the Morgan now MOT'd. Um, really should put the phone on silent, Steve. Really should. <laughs> um, so yeah, this um, Steve's been complaining how heavy it is lifting it over the wings of the car and everything. We thought we'd compare it to a Rover Cast Alley one. Uh, we've got some scales here. So we'll start with we'll start with the Rover one, I think. So a little bit tricky to weigh, but this one will probably fit on like this and weighs in at 5.7 kilograms. This one, go oh, is heavy and weighs in at 33.1 kilos. Steve's been going at the gym, why is he complaining about it? He's a bit more than what he's used to. Yeah. Okay, on we go. Engines as we stand today then, um, we've got this, I think it was a short on the last workshop update video we did. Uh, so 4 litre standard engine, um, when I say standard I mean standard for us, so Piper Torque Max camshaft. This I think might have been in this form in the last video, maybe not quite as dressed. Uh, this is going into a range of a classic in Holland, we're actually just waiting for the um, customer to come back off holiday middle of next month, um, so we can ship that out because it's all finished. The 4.6 stage 3 now has its injectors in it, which weren't in it on the last video. Um, did some photos of them going in, which you saw on our Facebook page. They're a Bosch uh, stand, that's the same size as the 3.9 injector, but they've got the four hole uh, spray pattern, so you get a much better atomization of fuel as it mixes with the air. So obviously a revised fuel map for that as well. So uh, that should be going onto pallet in the next couple of days and going up to Belgium for a range of a classic. Four litre standard engine going for a Discovery 2. So uh, again, standard for us is a Piper Torque Max camshaft. It's got uh, genuine rocker arms rebuilt onto brand new shafts, brand new push rods. I don't know if you can see maybe over here, Steve, we've got the uh, stainless steel shims that we do. Sometimes a bit better if you're a bit further away, but there's a small shim between the rocker pedestal and the head there. So holly set tap at preload um, across each bank. Uh, something all of our cylinder heads are done when we recondition them or remanufacture the cylinder head. All the valves are ground to within a few thou of each other so that tap at preload can be set correctly across all eight valves on here. If your valve heights are all over the place, obviously a shim kit's never going to let you ach um, actually achieve a correct preload on the tappet. And then finally in the lineup today, um, a 3.5 standard engine for an MGB GT. I think that's it. Oh, and the Morgan engine's now fitted. Have we done anything on that for Facebook yet? No. Oh, we might do by the time this is. It's in this video. It's in this video. Oh, there you go then. <laughs> You've seen that already, or are about to. We really need to do a storyboard <laughs> for these. Uh, let's go on to the next bit. Whatever that is. Or it might be, yeah, it'll be V8 related. That's true. Okay, so that's the engine, and this is where it's going. Previously mentioned on our workshop update video, Morgan Plus 8 uh, came in with engine issues, well, been diagnosed elsewhere with engine issues, uh, cracked block. So 3.9 um, was what was removed from this Plus 8, and is what's being refitted. 
the we didn't actually show the car the engine coming out and that because the car actually came down to us with the engine fully disassembled really um, from the previous garage that had been doing the diagnostics whilst talking to us on the phone uh, so we'll fit the engine in um, there's obviously quite a few ancillaries in that that aren't on us at the moment because it's quite a tight space you need things like water pump, front pulley, the alternator, etc., removed from the engine to actually squeeze it in here, and then they're fitted afterwards. The engine's going to receive our full ignition upgrade, the ECU chip. So all that really needs to happen now is someone needs to help me out of here, and then Steve can fit the engine. You're on your own. Damn. <coughs> Right, obviously this isn't a Rover V8 engine, this Ian. is a Ford... Ian, what? continuity. No. Oh. It's a different day, man. Not anymore. You know you're not keeping that. Um, yeah, 390 FE engine fitted in a 61 Ford Thunderbird. So, I don't think we've featured this on our Facebook page yet. I think Chris put some pictures up when he was over from Thailand. Um, the reason it's been here for a while, we'll explain in a second. Um, but we have got photos of this being stripped down, so we'll do a feature timeline on that. The reason it's stripped down is because it had really bad ticky noise on the uh, rear left bank here, which you trace down to a worn rocker arm. Uh, when we further investigated, we put a straight edge across the top of all the valves, the heights were all over the place, uh, which obviously meant preload on the hydraulic tappets, which is set the same way um, as a Rover V8 engine. Um, it should be equal across all eight valves on one bank. Um, yeah, that was never going to happen. So, cylinder heads have been fully remanufactured or remachined. Uh, brand new seats are installed as well, suitable for unleaded fuel. Believe the reason for the uh, uneven valve heights originally was valve recession because it had been run on modern fuels and obviously hadn't been converted over. So, the heads have been um, reworked here. Uh, the reason they took so long, it parts from America, it's um, a time scale of getting bits over. When you think you've got what you need, or well, the valves have all been done obviously the valve seats are installed you then check valve height and then spring preload so we then had to order in shims which weren't available so we had to order shims in and then machine them so that they then fitted um, so that the preload was correct on the valve spring so moving along the bench here we've got the old rocker arms that have come off the car I might be able to show you the worn rocker arm there we go I don't know if you can get that Steve how badly worn that is there we go. Yep, so that uh, was the cause of our ticky noise, but actually on further investigation and looking at uh, all the rocker arms, they're all actually st starting to show signs of wearing. Um, the old push rods. So we've then got all the new parts here. Uh, Mal gasket sets, a good quality gasket set there. Full set of 16 brand new rocker arms and adjustable push rods so we can set tap at preload. Um, it was that or machining up shims, so obviously Rover V8 engines we have them uh, laser cut out of stainless so we can set preload. Uh, we didn't know what thickness we were going to need, uh, adjustable push rods were available, uh, again we ordered them over so it was a couple of weeks along with the uh, shims for the springs. So Steve is now going to stop work on a 110 that we're currently working on with LPG and uh, start doing some work on this to get the heads back on it. So let's scoot over there to the um, 110, shall we? Over there? Over there. We're over there now. Over here now, and um, yeah, lovely old uh, Land Rover 110. So um, I think the, the bloke that owned it said it's a little bit like Trigger's Broom. Obviously it's got different coloured doors on, which aren't original to the car, etc. Um, but he's owned it for a very long time now, and uh, it's got a 3.9 engine fitted out of the Discovery, serpentine front end setup. Um, it's come in for the LPG system to be reworked. Originally phoned up for a setup on the gas system. Uh, we asked him to just drop us a couple of pictures over so we could see what we'd be setting up. Um, at which point we realised why it was probably struggling to run. We've got a free flow k n cone filter, which obviously is reducing vacuum in the intake pipe. Now that shouldn't matter too much because what he has done is fitted a Bloss carburetor style mixer, 
However, it's not the way we would normally convert these and it's certainly not the way we guarantee them to run. This is the mixer we run on our Bentley generator that you've seen us feature on Facebook before. That is a different application with a turbocharger, which is more where this would come in and we've used it on those larger capacity engines. For the 3.9 engine, yeah, we've, we've never set one up with these on. It's, it's not the route we guarantee. So we'll use a conventional mixer ring, which incidentally will also help with these limited space here as well. So he's really pleased about that. We'll run one of our filters with our power shroud on and upgrade the single stage vaporizer he's got there to the OMVL tandem vaporizer. And then we'll reintroduce the lambda loop. So at the moment there's no lambda loop on here, which again for reliability, economy uh, and also for performance because it opens up on, on full throttle and things, it uh, increases the fuel supply. We'll put lambda loop back in here and install our own lambda sensor into the exhaust system so we're not reliant on a, an original lambda sensor. Um, originally it was running I think a Tech 97 Tartarini ECU, a um, little bit dated now, um, I think somewhere I've still got a three and a half inch floppy disk with the software on for them, um, although they ran an individual cable that wasn't a standard AEB cable to diagnose them, which I don't have anymore, um, but we're going to update that to uh, I think a Millennium or Leonardo ECU lambda loop control that we always use on, on this style engine. Uh, in the back, if you, you didn't know you'd be walking to the back. I did didn't. You? But don't trip over anything, but walk, walk, walk. Um, in the back, we've replaced the original LPG tank. Um, the or original LPG tank we've taken out. Uh, wasn't really anything technically wrong with it. Unfortunately, it's all paperwork. Uh, this vehicle isn't registered on the UK LPG register at the moment. For us to register a vehicle, obviously we need to make sure the system's fitted safe that it's passing the emissions requirements. Um, which for us are you know, easy, it's sort of a done deal. Um, but the tank needs to be um, certified within its 10, year, 10 years of being produced. So his tank was actually date stamp 2000, I think um, September 2000, which obviously is 19, coming up to 19 years old. Unfortunately, that means it can't go on the UK LPG register. So, um, brand new tank. Um, and uh, we're actually managing to increase capacity there as well. So if you're going to change the tank over and get a bit more space, that's why not. So Steve's already got the tank in, got the top hatch through the floor so that the vent tubes can come down. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure how he's going to be able to work on two cars. He'll need four arms. Okay, let's work on that. We've got a CNC machine, there must be some way we can do it. Probably. I'll get the alley, you get the machine. Okay. With the gas tank installed then, Steve's now removed everything from under the bonnet. So all of the old parts of the conversion that we're not using, we've retained the original emulators because there's nothing wrong with them, they're still working. Um, they're not a common part to fail or anything, so there's no need to renew them. So that just leaves uh, him to refit all the uh, new goodies that we are going to put on with the land loop system and the tandem vaporizer. So uh, let's give him five minutes and then come back and see how he's got on. Five minutes later then, well maybe a couple more than that, uh, Steve's got the mixer ring now on, vaporizer in, uh, looks to be plumbed up water wise as well. Um, the shut off solenoid with filter with all of the pipe work running up to that which will all be clipped according to code of practice. Um, and the ECU is mounted on the bulkhead ready for all the wiring. Uh, you can't see it because it's behind the airflow meter Steve, just on this rather nice bracket. So. Um, that concludes this workshop update, or does it? No, let's just go to the Thunderbird for one last second, shall we? No, that was earlier. No, we're going back to it. Okay. You didn't know, no. but we are. Just to wrap this update up then, um, the cylinder heads are now bolted on this engine. So that heavy intake manifold that you saw in the intro um, will go on soon. Just obviously got to get the rocker gear built up and installed first. And then uh, Steve can remind us how heavy that intake manifold is. Again. Again. Okay, that's all for now. See you in the next update.